Hey everyone, I'm back. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. I hope all of you and your families are safe and uh, you're finding some sort of enjoyment in quarantine and social distancing and all that. Um, I know it's a trying time for everyone, but um, I do truly hope that you're doing well. And um, yeah, so it's been a little bit crazy for me. Um, we moved and uh, we moved like March 1st and then just about the weekend after that, um, things started to get locked down and get pretty serious. So um, moving halfway across the country and then kind of immediately being in quarantine and isolation is, is kind of weird. Um, it's a sort of weird form of uh, jail, I kind of jokingly say, but uh, we're doing okay. And um, it's given me a little bit of time for projects and a little bit more time to spend on Discord and uh, hanging out with everyone. So I don't really mind it in that case. Um, but yeah, so this is one of the projects I've been working on. Um, I hope that it's easy enough to follow and you'll, you will get something out of it as well. It's just simply putting a GPU in your Unraid box and running a VM, passing the GPU through uh, to the VM and then accessing it remotely through Parsec or another streaming service such as like uh, Steam's Steam Link or Rainway or uh, Moonlight if you have a NVIDIA GPU. Um, it does take a bit of configuring and um, it took me a little bit to get all of the settings locked down and um, the guide is pretty in depth. So um, if you do have any questions, please post them on the forum thread where the guide is. So I would like to thank uh, Space Invader 1 um, and a couple of blogs that I used for different Hyper-V settings and stuff like that. Um, Space Invader 1 has a lot of good resources for Unraid and GPU pass-through and whatnot, um, but he doesn't have anything quite definitive and um, I would say like all-encompassing as to how to make this work. Uh, so I used a little bit of his resources and again, I used um, some other sources just to put all that information together, do a lot of testing on my own and um, put the guide together. That said, um, I'm just gonna just tell you a couple things about it and really leave it up to you to check out the guide and read the rest of the guide. And that's about it. Um, so basically, if you have some free cores, you have a spare GPU, hopefully a modern one. Um, Nvidia ones are the most supported, so like, Really anything GTX 10 series and up uh, would be ideal. The 900 series works okay. Like if you have a 980 Ti or GTX 980, 970, they work, but the encoder's not as good. So um, the, the quality that you get on your streams is really gonna be down to the GPU's encoder. Um, so again, I have that outlined in the guide. And um, yeah, so I will just go over my setup and um, we'll go from there. So my Unraid box, this is my second Unraid box. Um, it's a Ryzen 9 3900X, um, a Asus uh, Prime something X570 board. Uh, I went with that board because it has three PCI Express slots. I wanted two for GPUs and then one for like a 10 gig NIC or whatever I want after that. So um, I need at least three. And then um, 64 gig of RAM, uh, two terabyte NVMe that I just had laying around. So I've got a couple of VMs running off of that and, um, just some storage drives, but I'm not really using the storage for the Unraid gaming purposes. Um, but I will show you that now. So here is my Unraid dashboard. And, um, and you can see I have all my drives here, my cache drive and, um, there's my flash drive. Then if I go to the VMs, I have two Parsec VMs, so I just call them Parsec, but they're, uh, they're pretty basic. And um, one is 10 cores, one's eight cores. Um, I haven't set up this Mac in a box yet, uh, but that seems like something I wanna play around with. Um, right now I have each at 20 gig of RAM. You definitely don't need that much. You could probably get away with eight gig or 12 gig. Just depends on what kind of performance you expect out of it. Um, I've got an RTX 2070 in the first one and a 1660 Ti in the second one. Both have Turing NVENC. That is the new NVIDIA encoder that is hardware-based and will provide much better quality than 
Pascal's NVENC, like the GTX 10 series, like a 1080, 1070. Intel QuickSync, I still think is the best because I've done some testing with QuickSync and Parsec and it does look really good. Unfortunately, with Parsec, there's no way to get QuickSync to re reliably encode, even if you have like another GPU and you point Parsec at QuickSync, it just doesn't work. Um, I've spent a lot of time testing that and unfortunately there's no way to get that to work. However, Rainway does support it um, where you just open the application and you just select whatever device you want to encode with. So I know it looks better because I've tried uh, ninth gen quick sync with the 2070 uh, with the new Turing NVENC and tried encoding on both with Rain Rainway. And I think that the quick sync one looks a little bit better. Obviously it puts less load on the GPU. So um, you get a little bit more performance there too. But for this setup with Parsec, everything's fine with Turing. I have no complaints. It looks really, really good. Um, so yeah, those are the VMs and uh, in the CPU pinning section, um, basically I have everything except for four cores for Unraid isolated and the rest are just left for, um, I have my Dockers randomly pinned, just don't worry about that. Uh, but the rest are for the VMs. pandemic reality there's sirens all the time it's kind of depressing um but anyway uh so my first parsec um vm has five cores 10 threads and the other one has four cores eight threads and you'll notice that cores 11 and 23 are not used and that's because 11 23 are dedicated to the emulator services for the vms and um, i do go over that in the guide so Basically, instead of using these cores, whatever here, we're trying to isolate them as much as possible. So it's almost like native pass through. Um, basically, you're not gonna lose any performance going from a bare metal installed just to this VM setup here. So again, all these cores are isolated from the Unraid host. Nothing is using them except for the VMs. And if you look, uh, the VMs are running, but basically they're not doing a whole lot. So there's there's really nothing here. And if you didn't isolate those emulator cores, um, you would see quite a bit more usage on the CPUs. And there's a couple other optimizations. That's all in the guide. So that's that. Um, they start up when uh, when the Unraid server starts. You can shut them down. And the GPUs actually just, because they're passed through in the way that they are, GPUs basically take up no power. It's like one or two watts or something like that. Uh, they're just sitting there waiting for a signal or to spin up and do something. Um, so that's really cool. When I shut this down, the box goes down to like 200 and something watts with the CPU and all the other drives. And there's a couple other boxes plugged into it, like a couple of 290s. So, um, but right now we're like at 300 watts with uh, two GPUs. So I will just pull up a Parsec instance here. Um, a couple of these are my friends, but uh, so I've got this HP Omen laptop, and then these are my two Parsec instances. And of course, in the client settings, we are H.265 enabled, and VSync is turned off. And then it's pretty simple. You just connect, and uh, that's it. I mean, it's here. It's working, and um, you can do anything. You can video edit, you can pull up a game, you can do whatever you want. It's a computer. Um, but looking at the task manager, <clears throat> you can see our, here's our 10 cores and there's really not a whole lot going on right now. Here's our RTX 2070. And if we go to manage, look at the device manager. So we've avoided the dreaded code 43, and that's due to the way that we pass through the GPU. Um, Windows cannot tell that it's on a VM, so there's no reason to give it a code 43, which is a, a huge issue for a lot of people. Um, but again, this is just native pass through. Um, this is actually not passing through a vBIOS right now. I found that you don't need it um, but I do have that section in the guide. I'm not necessarily not recommending it because you can, you can pass through the VBIOS. It's not going to do anything negative. 
But if you want to try without passing through the BBIOS, uh, you can do that as well. Um, and I found that on my setup, I just, I don't need it. So um, take that for what you will and you can report back as to whether you need it or not. But uh, yeah, so I will probably upload some Parsec gaming and um, just like quality and like how things look, how responsive things are. Um, I'm sure you've heard about Parsec from other YouTubers like Linus. I know he just put out a video on it um, because they're working remote, but uh, Parsec is a great tool to have in your toolbox because uh, especially when we're remote like this and um, you and friends are trying to find things to do together. It's it's, a good, it's just nice to have because if you pull up an emulator and you want to play like Mario Party or something like that, you can do that remotely with your friends and uh, you can host all of it and your friends can connect controllers to their little Parsec clients and um, you know we, you can have a good time doing that. Or if you have kids and um, you have, you know, they have laptops or something like that and you just want to show them something or they want to watch a video or they want to play a game, um, they can do it on a cheap little laptop or an iPad or something like that uh, where you just, you don't necessarily have to have that full gaming PC um, and you can access it remotely on the go. You can do it through LTE. If you need access resources that are at home, you can do it with that and you just need to do like a minor port forward. You don't need like a VPN or anything like that. Um, but again, I covered all that in the guide and how to do your network and, you know, configure all of that. So it's very, very fun and very, very neat to play around with. Um, right now I don't have a whole lot of use for my Parsec boxes, but it will be cool if we do have a LAN party or something like that, where people don't have to bring PCs. Now they can just bring their like work laptop or whatever install Parsec. And then because we're on LAN, um, I'm looking at like, looking at 2.36 encode latency, 0.2 decode latency. This is milliseconds by the way, and 0.44 milliseconds network. So you're looking at like three milliseconds across a local network, which is absolutely insane. It, you just can't perceive it. Some monitors are slower than that. And um, some USB keyboards are slower than that. So it's just very, very cool, very, very useful. Set it up and you can forget about it. You can turn the VM off. You can just leave the GPU in there. It's not going to do anything because, again, the way it's passed through, Unraid is not going to load the driver for the GPU. It's just waiting for that like pass-through signal and, and to spin up. Um, so it'll just kind of sit there and just chill out. Um as far as everything else with the guide, um, it should be pretty comprehensive. And if you look at the CPU and GPU recommendations, again, they're just recommendations or they're just like a comparison sheet. So you can look at a couple things where um, how many remote instances I would recommend per CPU. And keep in mind, those are separate VMs. So if I'm looking at like an R5 1600 AF, which is the new 1600 that just came out, at six core 12 thread, I would probably only recommend like one to two VMs on that. And they would be lighter end, um, because of just the core count is pretty low. But if you look at the, um, 9,900 K that's eight core 16 threads. So you could do two very solid, um, very high performance VMs on that still leave a couple of cores for Unraid, And, um, you would have a better time with that. If you want to do three, I mean, you're looking at like a 3,900 X, like what I have, um, I, I have again, five core, uh, and a four core each with hyper threading, but I could easily cut those down to, um, like a couple threes and a two, and then I would have three solid machines. So it's really about, um, your expectations and what you want. Of course, the Xeon server CPUs are gonna be great because they have a ton of cores, but if you're going to high performance stuff, and you want to do something like more than 60 FPS, um, which is possible with Parsec, by the way, I was doing 120 FPS and it works okay. Um, I haven't seen really any issues with it. Uh, it's just, again, like if you have the CPU grunt for it, that's great. Um, not to sidetrack myself, uh, the Xeon CPUs, they're still really good. Obviously, um, they're v better value if you already have them, just run what you brung and don't worry about upgrading too much. Um, I think that's pretty much it 
as far as this, I don't want to get too deep into this and, um, you know, just start explaining things away and, and all that. Um, take a look at the guide. I've broken it down into sections. I've have pictures for like every single step from installing windows to passing through the GPU to identifying devices to whatever. Um, I guess the last thing I want to say is that you don't have to use this remotely with Parsec. You can also do the same things through the guide, just follow the guide and then actually plug a monitor and mouse keyboard in and use it as a physical machine. Like Linus did with the two gamers, one, uh, like, uh, two gamers, one PC build. And, um, you can do something like that. So it's very flexible and it's very fun to mess with. And most of you probably have like some sort of GPU just laying around. So just try it. It's really, really fun. Um, let me know what you think. I will hopefully be making videos more often now that I have my camera. I just got my camera back yesterday. So, um, I'm very excited to keep making content and, um, hopefully everyone's doing well. Hopefully we can get back into the swing of things as far as like going back to work. And, uh, yeah. So I hope you guys stay healthy and I will see you in the next one.